this video would demonstrate the proper camshaft installation and timing procedure and the correct method to unlock the timing chain tensioner on the YXZ1000R. This engine should always be rotated clockwise from the AC magneto end. It's very important that the engine is never rotated counterclockwise, not even a few degrees, especially when the cylinder head cover is removed. The timing chain will climb over the camshaft gear teeth and change the camshaft timing. This can happen even if the timing chain tensioner is installed. The cylinders on this engine are numbered from the front to back as the engine is positioned in the unit. Cylinder number one is the front cylinder, number three is the rear cylinder. To remove the timing chain tensioner and camshafts, rotate the engine clockwise and align the top dead center mark on the AC magneto rotor with the stationary pointer on the cover when cylinder number three is at top dead center on valve overlap. Valve overlap is between the exhaust and intake strokes, 360 degrees after top dead center compression. The top dead center mark is the single line just to the left of the ignition timing H mark, not the single line alone, which is located 180 degrees from the top dead center mark. At top dead center on valve overlap, the number three cylinder cam lobe should be pointed downward and away from each other like this. In this position, there is very little pressure from the valve springs on any of the cam lobes. The tensioner and cam shafts should always be removed and reinstalled in this position. If you need to rotate the engine to get the number three cylinder back to top dead center, support the timing chain and turn the crankshaft clockwise to align the top dead center mark. The intake and exhaust camshafts can be determined by the size of this identification rib. The intake cam has the larger rib. If the cam sprockets have been removed or new parts are being installed, assemble the cams and sprockets to match this diagram, which is also printed in the service guide. Pull the timing chain tight on the intake side and set the timing chain onto the intake camshaft sprocket so that the number three cylinder intake cam lobes are in this position and the sprocket alignment marks are parallel with the cylinder head cover gasket surface. Pull the timing chain tight towards the exhaust side and set it on the exhaust cam sprocket and place the camshaft into the cylinder head so the number three exhaust cam lobes are in this position and the sprocket alignment marks are parallel with the cylinder head cover gasket surface. Make sure all the slack in the timing chain is on the exhaust side. The exhaust cam will tend to rotate slightly clockwise due to the position of the cam lobes. You can rotate the cam counterclockwise by hand when the caps are not installed to double check the alignment of the timing marks with the cylinder head cover gasket surface. Also note the punch marks on the number three cylinder camshaft lobes and the alignment marks on the cam caps. These should also align when the camshafts are correctly timed. When the timing chain is set onto the sprockets in the correct position, use cable ties to secure the chain to the sprockets. This cam cap can only be installed one way, and the individual caps can be identified with I for intake and E for exhaust. Apply a small amount of engine oil to each camshaft bearing surface and to the cam cap bolts. Install the cam caps and temporarily tighten the bolts just enough to bring the cap down into proper position. It's very important that you pay close attention as you tighten the cam cap bolts. Make sure the camshaft caps are going onto the dowel pins without binding and tighten the bolts evenly. Damage to the cylinder head, camshaft caps, or camshafts could result if you don't tighten the bolts properly. Also do not turn the crankshaft when installing the cams. It can cause engine damage or incorrect valve timing. Make sure the timing chain tensioner rod is retracted and locked in place before you attempt to install the tensioner. Be sure to use a new gasket with the L mark position as shown and install the tensioner with the arrow mark facing up and torque the bolts. When the bolts are tightened, the tensioner rod will contact the timing chain guide and be pushed back slightly. This will unlock the tensioner rod. It's very difficult to hear when the timing chain tensioners are released. You can barely hear the click when the circlip snaps free from the ledge on the tensioner rod. Also there's no real visible indication when the tensioner rod is released. The exhaust cam does not move and the timing chain will still have slack between the intake and exhaust cam sprockets. At this point, torque the cam cap bolts in the order shown. The cable ties can now be removed. Now turn the engine clockwise very slowly. If the timing chain appears to be trying to jump teeth on one of the camshaft sprockets, the tensioner may not have released. As the motor is turned by hand, there will be positions where the camshafts will rotate quickly or, or jump a small amount due to the valve spring pressure on one of the cam loops. This results in very audible clicking noises from the timing chain tensioner since there's no oil pressure. This is normal, but the chain should stay on the sprockets indicating the tensioner rod has released. Rotate the engine several times by hand, then align the top dead center mark on the rotor with the stationary pointer on the cover when cylinder number three is at top dead center on valve overlap. 
Again, this is 360 degrees after top dead center compression. Check that the timing marks on the camshaft sprockets are parallel with the cylinder head cover gasket surface and that the punch marks on the camshafts align with the timing marks on the camshaft cap. It's very important to make sure the tensioner releases and the camshaft timing is correct. If necessary, remove and reset the tensioner, remove the camshafts, and perform the timing procedure from the beginning. If the tensioner released and the cam timing is correct, you can now complete engine and vehicle assembly following the instructions in the appropriate service manual.